New England Candle Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candle Pin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By FICO's Family Bowl Drum in Franklin, Massachusetts. Visit FICO'sBowl.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. From Fico's Bolodrome in Franklin, Massachusetts, it's New England Candle Pins Summer Tournament 2014. In our first elimination show, Rich Kochi from Saugus rolls against Franklin's own Matt Rich. And in game two, Mike Legendra takes on fellow Franklin local Todd Trumpus. Now let's roll with your host, Jay Horrigan. Welcome to the summer season of New England Championship Candle Pin Bowl. Like I'm Jay Horrigan, and I'm with today's first two competitors of our summer series. This is going to be our first game of our summer series, and it is going to pit Rich Kochi. Rich, I got that last name correct, didn't I? You sure did, yes. Welcome to our show. This is our first, your first time with us, isn't it? It is, yes. And you're from Saugus, Massachusetts, correct? Correct. And you are going to be uh, rolling... Uh, from our fourth seed today, you qualified, correct? Correct. Okay, and you're going to be rolling against Matt Rich. Matt, you, you've been with us before, haven't you? Yep, a couple times. Yeah. Yes, you have, and that's great to have you back with us. You are our 13th seed today. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, <laughs> great. Now, what? how this competition is going to work, we're going to have 16 bowlers rolling off over the next several weeks. This is our summer series. We're going to roll down to where we get four uh series winners and then they're going to bowl in our final four competition where we'll come down to our last two competitors and they're going to bowl for the championship of our summer series of our new england championship candle pin bowling so we'll be back with our first match after this What is community without community support? Without community access? Without communication that creates a common bond? You can make community by making Community TV. Contact your public access Community TV Center. Learn how you can help, because you can. Volunteer today. When you support your Community TV, you also support your community. And we are back for our first match in our summer series here on New England Candle Pins. And I'm joined again this time by two-time defending champion Dave Chestercove. Dave, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Dave, I, uh, I think it's very, very kind of you to allow someone else to win this time. Dave is not bowling in this series. Um, That's correct. So we are going to have a new champion this time for the first time in a long time. Unless something happens, Dave is our first alternate. Uh, so if something happens to one of our bowlers, Dave is ready to jump in, right, sure. Dave? All right, so we're ready to start our first match between our number four seed, Rich Kochi, and our number 13 seed, Matt Rich. And Matt is going to get us going. Good luck, guys. Matt obviously will bowl with a bowling ball. That was just a practice walk up there. <laughs> Matt out of Franklin, Mass. Matt just off the head bin there, gets a good looking break. Leaves the 110. Piece of wood, could be tricky. Wide left, but he's but he got the 10 pin out of the way. And that opens up with a nine. That qualified 13th in uh, in our qualifying with a score of 347. Matt picking up 
six pins on his first ball there on lane 16. Oh, a tough break there for Matt. Right on the right on the object pin there, right through the others. Takes off the nice triangle for the nice pretty 10. Opens up with 19. Now Rich Kochi out of Saugus, Mass. Pulls, pulls out of uh, Central, so it's a Central Lanes. Kochi on the head pin first ball. Tough, tough break. Only taking out the one, two, four, and eight pins. Leaving a gigantic mess. Made a good run at it. Leaves just two pins left. Three and the five. Flex the five for a nine box. Rich Kochi did qualify fourth in our qualifier with a score of 383. Kochi right on the hip pin again. Dropping a, dropping a split, uh, leaving the 6, 7, 10. Piece of wood could be in play. Gonna go high on it, and he makes it. What a wow. shot. Great shot there by Rich. Yeah, he hit the he hit the wood nice and high there. Drove that wood towards the seven pin, let the ball take out the two pins on the right side. It's the right play. And he was going right for the wood. That ball wasn't aimed at any no, pins, that was a, it was any a right standing call. pins. Maddie coming right back on the head pin, drops eight. Piece of wood out in front. He's got to hit it. Can't get around it. And then it goes. And that follows up with a nice big spear. That's a good way to answer. So Matt working off a spare in the third. Right back in the hit pin again. Knocking down five pins there, so it gives him 34 in the third frame. Oh, bye. Almost, almost made that. Almost came off the wall. Let's clean this up for a nice 10 box here. That's a good two boxes there. Not much you could do on the head pin break. Cleans it up for a good 10. Rich coming up, working on a spear. Just off the head pin. Drops five though. Excuse me, six. My camera's a little off. with a rough box. It's actually a six box. I was uh, wrong on multiple accounts on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to be wrong, you might as well be wrong all the way through it. Yeah, that's right. I just got it all wrong that's on that you, one. You've always been consistent, <laughs> Dave. That's what we say about you every time. Oh, it's oh, a nice big wow. panel. Oh, at least I thought it was. Thought he had that. Would have been a nice comeback. Yeah, that, that's how you come back. Just the eight pin. Right at it. Piece of cake. Nice job, Rich. That's how you come back with a yeah. with a with the rough box there. This is uh, Rich's first time on our show and 
unlike a lot of bowlers, not appearing to be experiencing any first-time jitters here. Yeah, you know, Rich, is, uh, Rich has been in the pro game for a while, so, yeah. you know, pressure is nothing new to him. Very at ease. Put you back on the head pin here. Drop seven. Similarly, we've seen before, six, seven, ten. Wood in the middle of the lane there. He's going to go towards the wood instead of oh. and he makes the shot. Nice read up there by Rich. Matt Rich, excuse me. I got Matt Rich and Rich Kochi. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same thing written down here. <laughs> Working on a spear here. Back on the head pin again. Does he get it? Four times in a row after the first two boxes, he's found the pocket. Drops nine, leaving just a six pin. It's a great fill. Piece of wood behind the six. Ah, oh. uh, you just missed it. Just caught that in the wrong half. Ah, uh, he drills it for the nice ten. That's how you do it. So Matt keeping the pressure on Rich. working off a frame in the fourth, uh, spare in the fourth frame. Uh, I think it's kind of important to get a good fill here. Right. You're already down on the match and your opponent just put a 29 in these two frames. Right on the head pin. Right what you want to do. Drop seven. So that would, going back to the fourth frame, that would uh, give Rich a two pin lead. Okay. Will that ever Rich stop spinning? The, yeah, the wood just likes to keep on spinning, huh? In this game, you have to wait till all wood to stop. Well, as we're waiting, uh, Rich leaves the 5, 6, 10. And that wood should actually help him where it finally came to rest if he chooses to play it. He's, oh, wow, Ooh. just buy it. Just missed it. Hits the wood behind it and takes out the 10 pin in spectacular fashion. Goes for it the second time. Yeah, you see there, it took it right out. It's just off the head Jeez. pin, leaves the full horseman left. Very favorable piece of wood behind the two pinch. So it really, it really becomes a two pinch shot, really. And there it you go. It up. Great shot. Well there done. Rich. The Rich coach is 11 lane 16. He's got all those marks yeah. on that lane. And I think Matt likes uh, likes lane 15. He's got all his marks on that lane. It's good to see Rich <laughs> exchanging high fives with the crowd. Indeed. Work in the crowd. Nice shot by Matt. Matt Rich back on the head pin again, leaving the three horsemen right. Not a very good piece of wood touching that three pin. Let's see what he does. Oh, he gets by and makes the shot. Well done, Matt, on that shot. Interesting. Matt's had spares in the 3, 5, and 7 frame. Yeah. And Rich has had it in the 2, 4, and 6 frame. Keeping the pressure on. Or vice versa. It's Matt, Rich, and Rich. They, this yeah, is very exactly. Confusing. Oh, foul. He's got to mentally regroup here. <laughs> Who, me or them? No, no, Matt. I probably, have to. I them, probably well. have to as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's always tough, especially when it's in a fill. Got a little too aggressive with the slide. Charge the lane, as we like to say in the pros. He's right back in the head pin and answers. 
Technically, that's a spare, folks, as he did fall on the first ball. So it's a spare. Yes, it is. Uh, after a foul, which makes it even that much more impressive. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Because you really get a refocus. Rich working on spear, just off the head. Drop six. So with that fill, he will take the lead through six frames. Just missed the object that had been there. Just leaving the one and three pin for the 10. Ooh, don't want to miss sticks like that. Rich knows it, but he's going to bounce right back here. So through seven frames, that uh, gives a lead to Matt Rich by three pins, 83 to 80. Oh, nice shot. It's a good drop. Rich Kochi gets really a lot of action on those pins. Yeah, those uh, when his ball moving. breaks in there, hits the pocket. Matt, uh, Rich just leaving the five pin, like it was also known as the king pin. Ooh. Spare, nice spare. Wasn't well, for that piece of wood on the right there, we would have got by it and missed it. He knows it, he's gonna take advantage of it though. It's part of the game. Looks like I'm gonna have to do some running. I think our man Dave Chester Cove is going to take care of this. This may qualify Dave Chester Cove to advance into one of our shows. Oh. Dave, if you had stolen that pin for me, that would have put you into one of our shows as a bowler. Well, next time I go down there, I'll do that. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Three pins there for Matt exhausted. Rich. <laughs> up getting Matt Rich ends up getting nine pins in the ninth frame so he's got 105 heading to the tenth frame all right man on the last box here right on oh, the pocket oh come on Oof. Does drop seven. Leaves the uh, four, seven, ten. Piece of wood should help cover the ten pin. Ah, you just missed the four pin, so. All important to grab your sticks here, because yeah. you never know. So Leaves eight. Matt ends up with a 113. Right, so we got Rich working on a spear. He's got 90 through completed frames plus the fill, so he's down six. So he is opposite a nine box and an eight box. Right into the pocket again. Drops seven. Yeah, so that's 104 total so far. Rich leaves the three, six, seven. Favorable piece of wood to help jump that three pin towards the seven pin. So really, you just hit the three pin and see what happens. Oh, jeez. Wow. Wow. Tough break for Rich on that shot. So 
No. So, here is Rich as a two pin lead. Gonna need six to tie, seven to win in the tenth frame. We've seen that that sometimes can be tricky. Yeah, we've seen that on other shows, haven't we? Indeed. Rich taking no chances, puts it away in the first ball. So Rich, uh, Rich Kochi will be moving on. He does defeat Matt Rich. Rich hoping to get some style points here, trying to make uh, the four, seven, 10. Ooh, just by the four pin. And he cleans it up for a nine to finish with a 116. So our final score is Rich Kochi 116 and Matt Rich 113. So Rich will be moving on and we'll be back in just a second to talk to our bowlers. Welcome back, and we're with our bowlers from our first game today. Uh, first of all, Matt, tough break. Yeah, I felt like I was throwing a pretty good ball. Um, you know, that, that foot foul really killed me. <laughs> well, I think you did a tremendous job coming back from that foot foul, and you uh, it hit, uh, knocked all 10 pins down for the spare, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. I, I still had my chances, but you know, Rich bowled well, and uh, he deserves to go on. I thought it was a tremendous match. I think you both bowled very, very well. Uh, you had a number of marks in your match, and you're right. I think that foot foul was very tough. Yeah, I'll be thinking about that in my sleep tonight. Well, <laughs> well, don't think about it too much, okay? <laughs> and Rich, tremendous job. First time on our show, you came out. Uh, a lot of people that are here for the first time have a lot of first show jitters, but you didn't seem that uh, at all. Right, yeah, no, it was, um, he was, he's a great bowler. I got a little nervous, you know. It's it's you know, last time I was on TV was 2004 in Nashua, so it's a little different. But TV's you know, changed a lot it, since it, then. It did, yes. So, yes. But um, you know, see what happens. He's, a, he's a good bowler, though. He did a great job. He did a good. great job. Now the, I heard there were some people in the background. There was a woman that was a lot of screaming and everything. Yeah, that's my family. Right, that's my sister over there. My, oh. my family, my aunt, my father, my nephew, my my son, and um, Brittany. Uh, that's her daughter. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome so, that they all came yeah. with you. Oh, yeah. I found out something about Saugus last night uh, that I want to share with our viewers and everything. Okay. Uh, there's a show on TV that I found out last night. I came home and my uh, wife and my daughter were watching um, that uh, it's called Something the Gown or I Want the Gown or something from Vows in Saugus. It's a TLC show. Pretty exciting. It's something like say yes to the dress or something. Yeah, a, never, a bridal never, boutique. I never caught it. I don't, I yeah, never, I never neither had I till yeah. last night. So, but that's something to check out in the future. Okay. We discuss everything here on the bowling show, from bridal boutiques to bowling. Who knows what we'll talk about later? But since you were today's winner in, in our first one, you'll come back in our our uh, our fifth show and you'll uh, bowl against the winner of our next match. Uh, and take them on with the winner going on to our championship show. Okay, cool. Okay? Yeah, thank so you. congratulations, guys. Thank Great match. Nice. And we'll be back with our next two bowlers in just a moment. And welcome back. We're here with our bowlers for our second match. And we're with the person whose name I've never been able to pronounce uh, properly, our number five seed, right? Mike Legendra. Le yep. Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. So it's Legendra. Uh, Legendra, yeah. Uh, Legendra, whatever. Okay. <laughs> How's everything been? We haven't seen you for a while. How you yeah. been bowling? I've been bowling good, uh, consistent, you know, and uh, hopefully I beat my uh, 
let's do a little better than the last time I was here and you know just wasn't hitting the happen last time so you need to hit the happen you were uh, you were here for our last show correct no, the show before two shows ago yeah, yes two shows show okay two. okay okay um, have you been bowling over the last month or so yeah I bowl uh, Wednesday Thursday and Friday so so I bowl a lot anyway so but. and things been going well yeah okay hey, we're around my average so and then uh, you know hopefully I do better than the last time so excellent excellent and we're here with Todd Trumpus Todd welcome back it's good Thank to you. have you back on the show it's great to be back oh excellent and Todd you're coming in as the 12th seed correct that's correct okay great uh, and how have you been bowling recently um, Good. I did pretty well in the qualifiers, so I'm hoping this time I do a little better than last time, like Mike said. <laughs> well, everybody does, and everybody's got a chance because Dave Chester Cove is not bowling today. Not that we want to keep bringing that up. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's been, been thanking Dave. Uh, again, not trying to bring up Dave not bowling that often, but we will be bringing it up as much as possible. So we'll be back for this great match between Todd and Mike right after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready for our second match at today's show. Uh, Todd and Mike are ready to bowl, and Todd's going to be up first on lane 16. Good luck, guys. All right. Both local guys, both from Franklin. Indeed. All right. Or bowl out of Franklin. Todd just misses the headband on his first ball here. Leaves a cluster of pins. All right. Todd does qualify 12th in our in our uh, tournament here uh, with a score of 349. Todd opens up with a modest eight box. Looking to bounce back on lane 15. There he goes. <laughs> Much better nice. ball there. Oof. Right in the pocket. Leaves the diamond to the right. Three, five, six, nine. Ooh, just by the three pin. Gonna clean this up for a ten box. And he does. Nice job, Todd. So eighteen after two frames. All right. And Mike came in as our number five seed with a three seventy four average. Mike also starting just off the head pin. Drop seven. A one seven nine, no wood at all. Very difficult shot. Just to the left. Trying again. Same spot. All right. Mike looking to rebound on lane 15. Right in the pocket, oh, wow. knocks them all down. Our first strike of the tournament. Nice rebound. Very nice rebound. As always, the USCBA is a very proud sponsor of New England Candlepins. Can uh, help support all of our programs uh, by becoming a member today at uscandlepin.com. 
Now, but they have a uh, website, right? That is correct. Uh, that's uscandlepin.com. And we got pins yeah, all over the place a... here. Todd just off the head pin, drop seven. Oh, he hits it. Does he oh, get it? should go. Come on. Oh. Wow. Now he, he hit that right where he was supposed to. No, no luck there. Picks it nice and clean for the 10. Got a little housekeeping to do on that lane. A piece of wood came way out. There it goes. All right. Tough break there for Todd. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you couldn't have hit that really any better. A little bit of a pitch out. Seems to be squeezing it. Just off to the right. These three pins left. Uh, the one, two, five. Or a side saddle triangle, some like to call it. So on that first shot, you said it seemed like he was squeezing it. I mean, holding the ball maybe a little too tight. Yeah, he's, he's got a nice firm grip on the ball. Yeah. So that doesn't really allow a good smooth release. Mikey working on a strike. Right back into the pocket, looking for the double. Drops nine on the first ball. Nice piece of wood out in front. And there he goes. So Mikey starting off, starting off pretty hot after that first box. Absolutely. Mike does have a high single of 184, high triple of 452. And I believe he actually holds the five string house record here. That might be unofficial as some of our records are uh, have been lost as this place has been here almost 80 plus years. But right now that is the official record that we have standing. So Mikey, uh, after four, gets 50. Todd uh, falling behind here with 37. Still got a lot of boxes left. Only 13. Todd right in the pocket. Drops a fantastic oh. eight drop. Oh, how could that not go down? Yeah, I think it should have fallen there. But either way, makeable spear. And there nice it goes. Pickup. Well done. So Todd saying, not so fast, Mikey. Todd right back in the pocket again. A little bit of a tough break there, only dropping six. Even the two, four, five, and seven. I knew it when he let it go. Just missed the two pin. He Ideally, did. He's, you want to clean he it started up. walking away. Yep. As soon as he let that go. Makes a nice clean ten. That's yep. big. Twenty six for those two boxes. Mikey just off the head pin right. Leaving the one, two, nine, ten. No wood. Tough shot. Ooh, Oof. tried to play it on the inside or the outside, excuse me. Just missing the uh, the head pin. Get 
gets eight. So Todd will pick up eight pins just like that in that yeah. one frame. Cuttons might lead a little over half. Mikey right back in the pocket. He leaves the diamond right. The three, five, six, nine. Oh, hits the three Oof. pin a little too light. Gets only two. So he leaves the five, nine. Always want to clean it up when you're off to the 10 box here. And he does just that. The window open there for Todd. So, so Todd in those two frames did a, did a very good job cutting into the oh. lead. He's only down five now. Right. Todd right back in the pocket. Leaves the two five piece of wood. Shouldn't shouldn't be a problem. And there it goes. Nice. Well done. Nice. Todd making a match of it. Last three boxes, he's been right on the head pin. And he's got two marks and three frames. Ah. Just off the head pin. Drops three. Right, leaving uh, four pins still left. The uh, one, six, seven, ten. Very difficult ten box. Oh, and unfortunately, finds one of the holes. Yeah, Todd, a little disgruntled. Can't say I blame him personally. Chance to uh, to just chance to increase his lead here. Just missing the head pin leaves a 110. Piece of wood touching the left side of the head pin here. That actually makes the shot more difficult in my opinion. And he oh, makes nice it. Pick up. Well done. Very nice shot. You're working on a spear, looking for a big kill. Just off the head pin left. Only gets three as well. Well, this is very interesting. Mikey is leaving four pins to clean up. Mm. The one seven nine ten piece of wood behind the head pin and towards the seven. Not really in play unless. Unless he hits the hit from first, and he does. Cleans up a good nine. He gains at least three on the count, increasing his lead to eight. So Todd, with some work to do. Right in the pocket. Oh, leaves a tough break. A little high. Tough spare there. Very tough spare. We've seen this lead quite often here at B Post. Four, seven, ten. No way to really help him out. So often they uh, they just missed that four pin left. For you folks at home, that shot actually goes on either side of the four pin. You can either hit it into the wall or you can try to cut it. So I always advise just aim right at the center of the four pin. The odds of you hitting it dead center are, well, pretty slim. Give you a better chance of making it. Oh, just left of the head pin again. Does get, does drop six. This is a makeable split. One, three, four, ten, uh, seven. He hits it and oh, there it goes. Wow. 
Well done. Right when he needed it, too. Ideally, being down eight, you'd like to fill it with eight. Todd, you better uh, get over the lane 15. Yep, take your time. Being down eight, you drop eight, you're going to force your opponent to throw two 10 boxes to beat you. So it's a good ball. Drops, it couldn't do anything better. Drop seven, that's, uh, that's going to make Mike work. So Mikey needs two nines to tie. Yeah. 19 to win. Right in the pocket on the first pitch. Drop six. Leaving the two, four, five, seven. Piece of wood behind everything. And he makes it. He makes it. He, he didn't want to. You didn't want to fool around going to the last box. No. Mikey got a little housekeeping to do from uh, Todd's previous frame on that lane. Clearing a piece of wood. Oh, oh it just makes a mess of it. Pin again, another tough leave, but uh, but he's already won. He's got uh, 116. And Mike's average coming in was 115. Yeah, he's right on, right on his yeah. average. Look, he's trying to make the Mike. He's trying to make the shot. Yeah. Going for some style points. Mikey just finishes up with a monastic box here. So Mike Legender beats Todd Trumpets 116 to 108, and he will move on to face Rich Kochi in the Elite Eight. Well done by both bowlers. So we'll be back to talk to Todd and Mike in just a moment. And we're back. Uh, great job, guys. That was a great match. Great match. Uh, Todd, uh, you, you bowled well. Yeah, I mean, he just kept coming back. I mean, it was a close match the whole way down. We were both struggling a little bit on Alley 15, but he found a way to, to beat me in the end. He appeared just a little bit off the head pin. Just a little bit, yeah, especially on Alley 15. I think I was doing pretty good on 16, but for some reason, uh, just wasn't my day. But Mike bowled well. He did. He bowled very well. He, he, he was right there on his average. You were just a, a couple of pins behind because your average is uh, coming in. You were at 113. He was at 115. So you were right there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We were close match. It was really good. And you wanted to say hello to someone. Yeah, I wanted to say hi to my wife, Jean, and my two kids, Austin and Dylan. Awesome. That's great. That's great. Well, hey, well done. Well Thank done. You. And Appreciate I'm sure we'll see you back. Mike, great job. Thank you, thank you, you were bowling very, very well, and when you needed something, you really hit. Yeah, um, when, I, when I was hitting the, when the head pin, when I was hitting it, actually hitting it, it was going. But every once in a while, I'd just go by a little bit, and then i get the, the three or four fin you know, drop. But if I was hitting it, I knew it was going. So that's when you, when you feel good, you know it's going to go. So. Right. It seemed it yeah. seemed when you missed it and you, you left some pins, you also didn't leave any wood there right. and it made it very difficult to pick the spares up. Right, yeah. So, but you know, there's nothing you can do about that. You know, get as many pins as you can. And I did pinball better than the last time I was here and didn't have any footballs, which is great. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you're going to be taking on uh, Rich Kochi okay. uh, in, in one of our semifinals. So that'll be coming up in our, our series uh, down the road. And that'll be a great match. We'll be looking forward to that. So we'll be back uh, in our next show. One of our uh, preliminary shows will be coming up next week so thank you for watching and we'll see you soon
New England Candle Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candle Pin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By FICO's Family Bowler Drum in Franklin, Massachusetts. Visit ficosbowl.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.